You all want to know what's going on with the CMS call recording rule because you're getting different information from every different carrier and every different FMO in the country. And that's probably going to continue for a little while, maybe all the way through AEP until after AEP. Um, just got an email from one of the largest carriers in the country today. So I think everybody can agree right now that this does not have any impact on face-to-face -face sales. And that is, if we can all agree that that is true, and CMS agrees, that is a big win. That is a big win. Because the majority of our agents, our legacy agents... Are still face-to-face. -face. Yeah, so that, they're face-to-face, -face, their kitchen table. But that's what we're assuming. The conventional wisdom at this point that's been put out on each different insurance company's memorandum on this has said this covers calls. Now we have heard from some carriers that if you are going this route, well, I've heard that if you're face to face and they don't want to be recorded, you could have something signed. I know. A waiver. We've a all disclaimer. heard so many things. So one, there's nothing to sign. And I've had agents say, well, I'm going to make a form. And say, right. I, you can't, make, you can't a form. make a form. Anything with CMS has to be approved by CMS, has to have your CMS. So no, you're not going to make a form. And that is still contentious, whether if you go into the house and they say, I don't want to be recorded. Well, we already just said, if you go into the house, you don't have to record. If it's a call, it has to be recorded. That's not up for debate. No, well, people really have to consider where are you storing these calls? So, yeah. So you have to store it for 10 years. Interesting, again, because we've never had to store the application. And right. the government did not, did not want us to have that information. They wanted us to submit the paper and, and shred it right. and only keep the scope, which really didn't have much PHI on it. So now they're saying we got to keep the, the whole, whole call. call for 10 years where it's subjected to being hacked. Yeah, I mean. So make sure whoever's storing it, if you're, whatever program, everybody's offering some solution, is a very HIPAA compliant. Because right. we've had agents lose their contract from getting their stuff hacked because they were deemed to be negligent. So any changes that come up, you can count on us to bring it to you. But right now, that's what we got. Yeah. And, and it seems like every three days we get a new carrier, a new carrier a new interpretation. interpretation of it. So as we approach AEP, don't panic. Nobody really knows. It's, and it's kind of par for the course when CMS has a new rule um, that they kind of throw it out there and see what happens in practice. And then they might refine it sometimes during AEP or typically after AEP when they see how it went. And it's good to know that our two platforms, Sunfire and Connecture, if you do use those with us, the call capabilities are built in. So you're ready to roll. That, as of right now, that if you are not making a call, if you are face-to-face -face with your client, and some have said, or over Zoom, again, that could be, but if you are face-to-face, belly-to-belly, kitchen table selling, like we built this business, that that does not have to be recorded. Right. Now, what do you do with these recordings? Are the companies gonna demand we send them all in? So you have to keep these calls stored HIPAA compliantly because if there's a complaint, the carriers might ask you for it and you're gonna have to grab and pull it. If there's a random audit, they could pull, I mean, you just, you have to be prepared. They could ask at any time. You have to have we them don't know. organized so that you could easily find them. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of layers to to really understanding the whole uh, recording and, and uh, like shelving of the information. So I wanna bring up one more thing. The Senate is finally getting involved in these ads. And this could be good or could be bad. So there were so many complaints to Medicare about these misleading ads. I called the Joe Namath effect. Mm -hmm. That that's where this whole CMS, right. we have to record our calls came from. Right. And so are agents are calling their congressmen and their senators and saying, hey, why are we being penalized? Why are we weren't the big, huge call centers that we didn't make the problem? We, yeah. And the senator's like, we don't have any line of sentence. We didn't hear anything about it. So now Senate has taken this up last week and said, oh, yeah, there are a lot of complaints to Medicare. This has gone up considerably the last three years. Every year is higher. And so now they are asking for input. And it, it could turn out good. It could be good. It Finger, could be good. Out, yeah. that when they get involved, they could really crack down on these type of misleading ads, right. which I've already seen so many misleading ads. It's not even AEP yet, but right. the ads are nonstop on all social media. Seniors, see if you qualify today for $1,400 back in your Social Security. Seniors, see if you qualify right. for the new right. Medicare dental benefit. Seniors, 
Click here to see if you qualify for grocery benefits in your area. It's so misleading. It is so scammy. And, and that's the heart of it. That, yes. That and is this has got to stop. Mm -hmm. And this maybe this makes it almost impossible to put any ads out there. And that might be better. But these ads are not good for our industry. They're not good for the Medicare beneficiary. They're definitely not good for the professionals that try to work in it. And now that we get the Senate involved, who knows where we go from here. Happy selling.